for the dramatic yesterday, Coach. 21 points uh, in the fourth quarter. You just scored three times more than you have all season combined. And your kids really showed a lot of character. A good gut check game yesterday. 60 full minutes of football. And it ended up uh, being the difference in the ball game. Well, it was a crazy ending, but you know, it's like you say, if you play long enough, good things will happen for you. And I'm sure there's a little bit of good fortune involved, but that also has to do with being close at the right time. So I think that paid off for us, and we're real pleased with the win. Now, Coach, uh, how have you gotten the attitude of this ball club changed around? We talked about it a little last week down at Texas Arlington. It was as low as I've seen a Wichita State team in a while. Now, all of a sudden, you guys are back on a plane. You've knocked off two teams that had won three straight games coming in on consecutive weeks. The attitude of this club has changed a great deal. Well, I don't, you know, I don't know exactly how it's been accomplished exactly, but I think it, the kids have a feeling that they can win, and I also think they have the feeling that it's going to take them 60 minutes of play in order to win. And I think maybe that's something that a lot of people don't realize, that a lot of teams can play a while and, and be good enough to win, and we have to play the entire time to win. And I think now we realize that, and, and we wish that we would have realized it earlier, but I think we understand that that's what it's going to take, and there is no other way for us. As I just mentioned, Southern Illinois was coming in with a three-game winning streak. Wichita State to say in the Missouri Valley Conference rate, uh, race needed a win yesterday. And don't you know they got it. Going to the first half, highlights, temperatures, 68 degrees. Winds out of the south at about 10 miles per hour. A wet field coach. Southern Illinois takes the wind uh, on the toss. A testimony to the faith they have in their defense. So uh, uh, they wanted to shove it right down the offense's throat from the start. Yeah, they had an opportunity to take the ball, and they chose to take the wind. So I think they felt very, very good with their defense. And you can see why as Brian comes out and makes a major mistake here, and he starts to slip and drops the ball. And we turn it over on about the 21-yard line. Southern Illinois takes over from there, and it's Byron Mitchell for 5 to the 16. Southern Illinois trying to stick it in there right off the opening gun. It doesn't take them very long. About three plays later, I think they're in the end zone, and it's a big play here on a third down, I think it is, or it's a long yardage play, and he hits it, goes to about the two-yard line. That was a third and 19. Bobby Sloan for 18 on the play. Three plays later, it'll be Bruce Phipps going in from one. The extra point would be good, and it's a Southern Illinois lead, 7 to nothing over Wichita State as the clock has just started to tick under the 15-minute mark. Shocks can't move it. Uh, McDonald's looking um, for Owens here on uh, a third and five situation. You come up a yard short. Yeah, he almost has it and doesn't, doesn't quite get enough to get the first down. We've got to kick it away, so we have to turn it over to him two times in a row at the beginning of the game. Looks like their decision at the beginning was the, was the correct one. Here, Brown rolling back, looking for Sebron Spivey for 13 yards to the 44. They had good success moving the ball early. They, they moved the ball well in the air, and they moved the ball well on the ground. They did a good job going up and down the field, and our defense stiffens a little bit here, I think, that as we get on, and they don't put this one in, but they do move the football. That was a third and five conversion, good for a first down. They're at the 44. Shocks defense stiffens on a third and six, and they take over on the punt after this incomplete pass. Almost as, an inner. Yeah, good job there by Darrell Whitley and Chris Bads Young, a host of others. And you get the ball back now, and finally the offense uh, starts to hit the groove with none other than Velasco Smith. Yeah, he pops it up in there. We had pretty good daylight, and he ran well, and we got off the ball well. Our kids up front did a good job of moving their defense, and, and we started to punch the ball at them, which is what we knew we had to do. And now Velasco makes a break back, and there's a big hole back there, and it's a good job walling off on the backside. And I thought maybe he could outrun him all the way to the zone, but he they got too much of an angle on him, so he starts to do a little majorette step here and gets back in for a few more. And, it is a big, big play for him. I think it's a 48-yarder. 48 yards of his 106 on 16 carries on the day. Eric Denson back in action, and he really came up with a good performance. He did a super job. He did a super job. Shows a lot of class, and I think he came back and under a little tough situation. He came back and played very, very well. And here we have to keep the ball on the keep to the outside because they're all ganged up inside, and Brian gets it in the end zone for the touch, and we come back and have the thing tied up. So it's even at 7 on the extra point by Lopez Chavarro. Southern Illinois, uh, Illinois hurt badly all day long by penalties coach in the key situations. Uh, nine for 58 in all on the day. After an illegal procedure, uh, Brown is dropped by Thomas Glinsey here. Yes, well, our, I think our first sack of the day, we did have two, and we finally got to him and knocked him down. And the, the ball game has become a pretty wild ball game at this point. There's not a lot of points being scored, but there's a lot of emotion and there's a lot of things going on out there, and, and they're moving the ball better than we are at this time. This is in the second period. 1205 left. Mitchell hits for seven to the SIU 44. And coming up next, it'll be Brown going up uh, in the air as Southern Illinois looks to move the ball towards the end zone. They're throwing the ball and throwing it with pretty good effectiveness, and 
We've got some good athletes out there on the outside, and they're doing a pretty good number on our defense. And we've got a lot of defensive kids that are hurting out of there, and it's really it's really taking its toll on our kids. They converted six for eight in first down situations, or on third down situations in the first half here. Uh, Phipps for four to the 16, then the big play, Mitchell on the draw. Yeah, the big play for the draw, and he takes it all the way to the end zone. And this kid's a great back, and he's got a great average. I forget what it is. It's some fantastic per carry average, and he wasn't anything that we could sneeze at on Saturday because he played very, very well against us. Much better runner than he is a dancer, as he showed there, but nonetheless, the <laughs> kick no good. Southern leads at 13-7 to at this point. You get a great return here from Jose. We had great kick returns, and uh, Jose takes the thing and breaks it away from it. They try to squib it when they kicked it into the wind, and I think it hurt them more than it did help them, so we were able to get the ball in pretty good field position. Here's Dwight Eaton. Yep, breaks it on the dive up the middle, and we get about 15 yards, 16 yards on the play, and we're moving the ball pretty well at this time, but we can't seem to sustain it enough, and I think we have a problem here, and on fourth down, I have to go for a long field goal, and it's not quite good. Pretty good kick, but not good enough. That was a seven-yard run negated by a motion penalty, so Sergio lopez Chavarro back out the injured list. Field goal attempt from 46 is no good, as you see, wide to the right. So, four minutes left in the second. Uh, Southern Illinois back on the offense, leading the football game, and they're going to go to the air. Brown looking for Patterson. Has the man open. Good timing pattern. Yeah, good they did a nice job on this completion, and Chris Badshaw makes the tackle just a little bit too late. He got right in between the two covers, and they did a pretty good job on the completion. Do a good job gutting up right here, though, and get a good read on the defense. Yeah, they play well, and we're, we're rallying to the ball. It's just that they are still moving the football, and they're doing a good job throwing it. And they've got time back there now, and he hits him again over the middle, it looks like, and Chris Batchong picks it off. So once again, we get saved by the interception. It looks like we're going to have a pretty good chance. Maybe we can go back and, and put some points on the board before the half. And this is our full intention is to get the ball downfield as rapidly as we can. We start off a little slip screen, I think, to Velasco, and he picks it upfield for about the little 16, 18 yards, I believe. To the 40-yard line, a minute 22 left in the first half of action. Remember, the Shocks trailing 13-7. to Dan Gilbert saw some good action, and he was uh, played well for the Shocks. Yes, he did. He makes a nice catch here, and it's a big play, and almost gets out. I think he juggles it, and then comes back and puts it away right before he gets out of bounds, so we pick up another first down, and we can't do enough with it to drive the ball in, and now we have to try for a long field goal, 57 yards, and it is not short, but it is wide, and you have enough leg on the ball to get it through, but it was a little bit to the right. So there's only like uh, 30, what, 32 ticks left on the clock, and I'll be darned if they don't take this thing down and, and punch it in on the last play of the half, and this is a this is a hard one to swallow right here. This is extremely tough on, on your football team, and it's tough on your kids' confidence when someone can do this to you, and, and we felt badly about it, and at halftime we discussed it at no uncertain terms, but it did happen to us, and it makes it just a tougher hill for you to climb over in the second half. Extremely well orchestrated drive they do using a good job the clock. The ball. Very, very good job to get out of bounds. They use their timeouts, and I think that uh, they're going to throw this little one down to about the one yard line. This is to Spivey again, I believe. For 11 yards, and uh, he's knocking it down there. Uh, it'll eventually be Phipps for the touchdown coach, and you had to be feeling a, a little bit of a lump in your throat about this time and, and feel it slipping away a yeah. bit. Yeah, this was a this was a real real tough situation right now because you don't feel there's any way anybody's going to take the ball that far in that length of time and they did it now they did a great job with it they got out of bounds and stopped the clock they had three timeouts and they used them all and now they tried it the only thing we got out of it and i think this was a big big play was that they did not get the two-point conversion in there was a time when our kids could have let them just score and they didn't do it at the end it meant the difference 19 to 7 at the half let's talk a little bit more on that emotional edge that the team gets back on a two-point failure if you're in the uh, on the other side of the field, do you kick that ball, get that extra point on the board to uh, to really get a team down emotionally on defense? Well, I think I understand why they went for two because they wanted to come up for two full touches and make it 21, and they weren't able to do it. So I think it did give us just a little bit of punch, even though it was a sad state of affairs to give up the touch in that short period of time. But the fact you stopped the two-point conversion means that, hey, we still can't hang in there and play football. We just didn't fold it up, and I think it helped us. Offensively, you, you look pretty good in the first half. Move the football with some consistency, both on the ground and through the air. But defensively, uh, you had to be shaking your heads looking for answers. Yeah, we were in trouble defensively. We knew going in with the number of kids we had out that we were going to have some trouble. We knew the, se the second half, the offense had better dominated. 
or we were going to be in a big, big problem. So we went out in the second half in hopes offensively we could play a little stronger football game. And for once, Wichita State did exactly what they needed to do in the second half, as we shall see when we come back on the Ron Chismark Show. On the opening toss, Wichita State takes the football to open the second half of action. And as it had turned out, every possession became important in the second half of action, Coach. Craig Edwards, right off the bat with a great offensive play, got to think about making this guy a wide receiver. Oh, yeah, he'll be in to see us first thing <laughs> in the morning. I know I want to be a wide out, but Paul came off that tee like a shot. I don't know whether he knew he was going to catch it or not, but he sure did. And we end up with great field position and can't do much with it. And they end up getting the ball back. And here's a big play for us. Looks like a big play for them. It's a big completion, but they've got a, an illegal receiver downfield. So not only does it cost them the completion, it costs them the down, they have to kick it to us. So the Shocks have it back with 11.35 left after a 16-yard punt at the SIU 37. And uh, that's Gilbert on the reception for 11 to the 12. Then you got Eric Denson coming back. He's coming back and busting it inside and running very, very well. Gets the thing down almost to the touch and a little bit short, but a good job running. We finally punched the ball in. And I think it's Jose Wilson takes it in for the score. And now we, we could have a chance to pull within one score of evening this ball game up. And it's a good situation for us now, momentum wise. Kicks good. Complexion of the game has changed. 19 14 from the 22. Brown looks for Stevenson. It's good for nine to the 31. Then he comes back for Spivey, who did a nice job catching the football. Now he's a fine receiver. He's a nice athlete, catches the ball well and runs well with it afterwards. That's the scary part. He can put the ball down the field after he makes the catch. That's good for 13 yards to the 44. Then on a third and six, big play, Brown looking for Sloan. It's good for 15. Yep, hits him for the big play. And all of a sudden, their offense is punching the ball at us again and doing very, very well. But our defense does stiffen. We do get a break on a bad motion by them. And so now they are going to have to punt the football, I think. And there's the motion flag, as you can see. Otherwise, they would have picked up the first down. And so they have to go back and try again. They don't make it. And I think the kick now helps us. Ball uh, floats out of bounds at the four-yard line. You're backed up to your own end zone, but still better to have the football than them ramming it down your throat. Yeah, we, we do get a first down to come out of here a little bit, but we can't put two together, and we don't want to take any chances at this point in the ball game, so we end up having to kick the ball back to them, and Dave Armagos kicks it out of there, and this is a big, I think, 49-yarder. Goes over his head, and they pick up a clip on this play, but if, they do, if the guy doesn't clip him, I think maybe we may recover the football. So if there is such a thing as a good clip, I think he made a good clip that time. 49-yard howitzer from Arvagost, who continues to kick well, a 42-yard average on the day. As the Shocks uh, keeping them pinned, pinned down, uh, Phipps stopped on the draw. 14.07 left. Shocks get it back at the SIU 49. Yep, and Brian goes across the middle to Albert Hundley for a big play on us, and it helps us to get the ball down there where we've got a chance now to go in and try and get that game finally get ahead in this football game. Here's a little counterplay to Velasco, and he punches it up through. Does a good job with it. Running hard between the tackles, as he always does. Now McDonald looking for Eric Denson, and it's going to end up going into the end zone. This is a great play by Eric. Great play getting in the end zone, and it's a good job catching the ball, and all of a sudden, we've got a chance to go on top. And it, uh, we do, and it makes a big difference for us, I think, at this time. 20 to 19 in the ball game, up by one. Then the first play after the kick, great job by Donnie Weatherby. Yeah, Weatherby forces the fumble, and actually defensively, you're not allowed to advance it, so we do get the ball right there. And on the first snap, Jose Wilson breaks it back. We get a great job of blocking up front, and they wipe out the backside. He cuts it all the way back, and goes down the boundary, and they miss him a couple times, and he almost puts it in the end zone, but takes it all the way down, I think, inside the five-yard line. To the two, 41 yards for Jose. Three plays later, McDonald for a second touch of the ball game. Takes it in off the ball, almost the same play as we ran before, and he gets in for the, another touchdown, and now things look like they're going to be in pretty good shape, and it's a 27-19 game, and I'll be darned if they don't come back and just blow it right at us so fast that you can't hardly count. 7.42 left in the game, but believe me, folks, it's the wildest 7.42 you'll ever see from the third. 33. Spivey for 30 yards to the Shocker 37. You had to be rolling your eyes saying, here they come again. Yep, that was the scary part of it all. We thought, well, now we've got them in a box, but I'll tell you what, we left a big hole in the box, and they sure came running back out of it. We're moving the ball, we pick up, a, they fumble the ball, it goes out of bounds, and we pick up a personal foul at the same time, and all of a sudden, they're down there almost inside our 15-yard line, and they come back with the option again, and he takes it all the way in. Mitchell goes for 12 officially and the touchdown, and the two-point conversion uh, would be good. At this point, a 27-27 ball game. Shocks come back on your own 47. You have to come back and try to keep running the football, and the ball game is tied up, and you want to make sure you do the right things with it at this time. It's important that you move the ball and you try to keep it. 
but we aren't to midfield yet, and I think we come up here about fourth down and one and we're short. I asked upstairs how short was it, and they said it was a good yard, and the sensible thing to do right here is kick the football and hope your defense is going to be able to play with them and hope you can kick it down in there rather deep, and we pick up a five-yard penalty on top of the catch, and they end up on a 25. We had hoped they'd be a little bit deeper in this, and they went down and punched it in and went ahead on us. So I guess if you can second guess it, we should have run with the football and taken our chances. But at this point in the game, you have to hope that your defense is going to be able to at least stop them and get the ball back. You're not behind, you're tied. Brown keeps for 22 there to the 47, three plays later. Brown will look for Mitchell. And this is a big play indeed. Mitchell runs well with the ball after he catches it. I think about a 40-yard gain, and he goes all the way down, I believe, to the seven-yard line. So now we're in, we're in deep trouble right now. Then it's Sloan coming up in the end zone on the next play for the touchdown. The kick will be good, and all of a sudden it's a 34 to 27 ball game. And how quickly the ebb and flow of this game changed. All of a sudden, what looked like a fine ball game that we're about to put away now is now we're behind, and a minute 45 left to go, and so we've got to come out now and make something happen. And I think we do it with a little bit of a little bit of class here, and I think it's done pretty well. Eric runs hard with the ball as he catches a little sneak from uh, Brian, and we get a 15-yard gain. He goes to him again. And it's, this is a great job of running with the ball after the catch because it shows great athletic ability. He's on the ground almost, keeps his hand down for balance, gets up and still gets himself another 10 yards. And we were able to throw this little hook to Albert once or twice over the middle. And they started to sneak up on him. And uh, it looked like a good time. Maybe we could go deep. And two plays later, I think we put the ball all the way on top. And Albert just it's a takeoff on the original pattern. And we go deep for the touch. And, we're back in the football game. Well, he's really added a nice dimension to this offense. It gives you some speed going down the field and it helps us that way. And we get in for the touch, and Albert's going to try and do his little thing, but he knows he can't <laughs> slam the ball. So he lays it down and then does his little whatever kind of a dance routine that is. He needs some uh, <laughs> some work on that also. But now you have to go for two because you want to win the football game. And, and I think we've got uh, the right thing going for us. And this is a good job by our entire football team. And, it works out even better than we thought it would because the guy trying to, to cover Eric gets tripped up a little bit and Eric comes wide open in the end zone. It's a fine catch and he gets down with his foot in bounds and now we've got ourselves a one point lead and everybody's trying to celebrate and we're having a big time of it. But you know something, there's some ticks left on that clock and I'll be darn, darn if we don't have to fight our way through this thing in order to go off with the win. 41 seconds left. Some 80 yards away, they'll start, and they get a bunch of yardage right off the trick play on the kickoff. It could have gone easily astray. Yeah, I thought that thing, it was a lateral. It was a good, legitimate play, but he almost drops it. And I think he almost steps out of bounds here, comes back through and picks up another 20 yard before we finally bring him down. And what looked like a, a terrible play ends up being a pretty good one for him. Then they're going to try to go up deep and get punched that ball down there at at least a field goal range where they have a chance to win it. This one sails over the head of the wide out. Field goal attempt on the last play of the game and Mr. Miller can't convert from 44. No, nope, can't quite get it and hooks the thing off to the left and we come out with a victory and it's one of those wild and crazy wins that you get and you're extremely happy that it happened, <laughs> but sometimes you wonder how you ever did get through it all. I don't think there's any question that ball control in the second half was the key. You knew it would be. You told your kids at halftime. You controlled it 18 minutes and 52 seconds of that second half. The offense did a great job holding on to the football when they had to. I think it was something that we knew we had to do, and if we couldn't do it, we weren't going to win. And as it turned out, we needed every one of the seconds. We could have waited a little longer to score the last touchdown. It might have helped, but uh, that's what it took to win, and thank goodness we had enough to get that done. So all of a sudden, the shocks are in the thick of the Missouri Valley race. Up next, a big roadblock in the form of Tulsa. whether it be football or basketball. And in the past, it was baseball that it was Tulsa and Wichita State uh, come money time. And indeed, uh, incredibly, in football, uh, it's going to be that way next week. Tulsa, Wichita State, big ball game. It'll be a big ball game for us. And last year, you know, they rather humiliated us down there. And I think it's something that we have to come back and, and do a good job against Tulsa this year because in order to stay in the race, we must get past Tulsa. And we're the only team, it looks like right now, that's going to beat them if anyone can. And, and so it's up to us to get it done. 
Now they're a three and five ball club, but they're better than the record indicates. Obviously, oh, no, they're a fine, fine offensive football team and uh, three and five, but their five losses came to some great football teams. So there you go, Wichita State and Tulsa. That's of course next afternoon out at Cessna Stadium, a one o'clock kickoff for that ball game. Get out and support these Wichita State Shockers. They are improving week by week, two in a row for the first time in two and a half years. Next week we'll be on at eleven o'clock for Coach Chismar and my producer Kevin Hager. I'm Bruce Earl. Good night, everybody.